Hey everybody, it's Tom, and I'm going to be carrying on today with more discussion of medical ne nemesis, limits to medicine, medical nemesis by the inimitable Ivan Illich. Right, so there's the text again right there. Last time I spoke briefly about some major themes which are sketched in actually the 1995 preface to the work. And to recap very quickly what Levin Illich offers in the preface is that many times the language in which he used, <coughs> the language which he used to couch his argument was problematic from the standpoint that it was conducive to a systems analytic approach to the human being. Now, even though he was using that language to criticize and what I would argue, in, what, in which he felt a very sound way, the medical establishment, that it can be connected to a systems analytic approach, potentially undermines the effectiveness of that argumentation. Because a systems analytic approach to the human being, that is an approach which understands the human being as simply a set of systems and subsystems which are integrated into an aggregated unit, which we might call a life, what all that approach actually does is it actually truncates our sense of the human being and essentially cuts out the subjective aspect of our existence. That is, it looks at the human being no longer as something which is being and becoming, but as a target for manipulation, um, control, dominance, and so forth, right? So the very sort of axial, rather the, ax the axiomatic ground upon which system analytic thinking finds itself uh, is in deep tension if n it is not strictly inimical to a fully ethically grounded approach to not just medicine, but to life at large. These are broad issues. In the introduction, we start to narrow it down a bit more, right? Though we're still, we're still definitely circling above the ground in the introduction, which is from the original book in 1974. Still, it could have been written practically yesterday. The opening sentence is that, and just to make sure I don't merely paraphrase it, I'll read directly from it, that the medical establishment has become a major threat to health. And this arises because when any, when any establishment, Illich will offer, comes to a certain scale, it then comes to undermine the very end for which it was instituted. And the formal term, the technical term, which Illich marshals in this connection is specific counterproductivity. And in this regard, I will go ahead and take the liberty to read directly from the text the definition which Illich proffers. Specific counterproductivity is Sorry, it's right here. Um, but I just didn't want to possibly muck it up. But the specific productivity is an unwanted side effect of increasing institutional outputs that remains internal to the system which itself originated the specific value. Let's Let's look at that sentence again a little bit more closely. Specific counterproductivity is an unwanted side effect of increasing institutional outputs that remain internal to the system which itself originated the specific value. In this case, in the course of this book, the specific value is health as it's defined by the medical establishment. Note that this is uh, what um, some people might refer to as an empty signifier. What is health? Because the medical establishment will tend to 
formulate its answer to that question in terms which is in favor of its own logic. But Limits to Medicine is one of a series of essays, part of a broader project of thought in which Ivan Illich was involved mostly in the 70s and 80s, but really through the whole of his career, in which you have this problem of institutional scale. And it may be helpful by way of contrast to look at specific counterproductivity as it displays itself in another arena. And we may look at, for example, uh, education. And I did a little bit of a video on that a little bit back a few weeks ago, right? Institutional education actually begins to formulate a sense of learning which is in favor with its proliferation and transmission along a graded avenue. That approach to learning invites a broad use of testing, especially standardized testing, which in tandem with the commitment to scale actually subverts the pedagogical relationship, the relationship between teacher and student, actually ultimately dispossesses both of those people from the roles which they are inhabiting. The primacy is granted to the test as opposed to what is actually being learned. And it doesn't take that much consideration to see how it can be actually incredibly damaging to the educational process to prioritize the test as we have done. And yet, the implementation of standardized testing is perfectly coherent from the standpoint of the system and is even seen as a mechanism for the advancement of learning despite the fact that it's subverting learning and subverting a true teaching relationship, as any teacher will tell you and any student. Right. In fact, it's kind of an example of the emperor's no clothes. You're going to be hard pressed to find anybody who will enthusiastically argue for the benefit of standardized testing. Even though everybody knows it's ridiculous, we all carry on with it nonetheless, right? But I don't want to get too far off on that hobby horse. It's an example of how an institution comes to a certain scale and introduces a value, in this case standardized testing, which is actually specifically counterproductive to the deeper intent learning, but can it get away from the notion of standardized testing because it's uh, simply the logical consequence of how it has conceived of learning in the first place. So then you take the turn to medicine and how medicine defines health in this context, in our contemporary context where industrial medicine has a certain scale to it. And what comes about is a deep subversion of deep health. And what is deep health? And calling the caveat that this kind of language has to be used with discipline lest it degrade to be merely another iteration of system analyticity. Deep health has to do with the propagation of autonomy and our ability to lead our full life with both joy and suffering and a relationship with our mortality without the problematic dependence on extrinsic factors. The health system by contrast, actually engenders precisely dependence on external factors. And so one way you can see this very quickly is how it's conceived to be in our society perfectly normal that everyone has a doctor, everyone goes to a doctor, but really this is uh, anomalous, a very recent development historically. Historically, it was thought you would only go to a doctor 
if you're sick. But now you have an inversion. And that inversion reflects, you know, it contends, uh, the really problematic way in which we have constipated medicine and given it over to the sort of cult of the professional or the cult of the expert. And this is another sort of strand of this broader intellectual project to which I alluded earlier and which Illich is undertaking. And that is his indictment of professionalism or the idea that the different segments of human existence should be sorted out and delegated to subjection before various kinds of authorities, various types of expertise and experts and professionals. The problem with this is it dispossesses all of us from our full capacity as uh, human beings to engage the questions of life as they arise before us. So this is the stuff that he discusses in the introduction and he finishes off with a summary of the sort of broad structure of, his, of the, the book beyond these opening comments. Initially you're going to deal with iatrogenesis clinically and then socially and then culturally. Those are the three terms. And then the fourth or closing section of the text deals with uh, the, the, his, his proposed remedies, right? Or what can one do about what it is with which we are reckoning? So much then by going over some of the stuff in the introduction, which follows uh, tidily enough from the preface. And hopefully that was at least stimulating and hopefully helpful. Uh, and uh, next time we're going to get into the text proper and talk a bit about clinical iatrogenesis, right? All right, guys, once again, this has been Tom. Thanks for listening, and I will talk to you guys later.